Hello, Masoka Universe. Uh, before we get into uh, preview of the Bundesliga and the review of the first round, we've rather some sad news to cover uh, regarding Gerd Müller, who passed away aged 75 yesterday. I think he was already suffering from Parkinson for quite a while over the last two years. I think hardly anyone has seen him publicly. Um, Gerd Müller, I'm wearing this Bayern shirt. Gerd Müller is at the very foundation together with Sepp Meyer and of course Franz Beckenbauer into turning uh, FC Bayern Munich into the power that it is today. Before those three, Bayern Munich was a decent but not a great team in um, Germany and Europe. With him, everything turned around. I have already made a video where I make a case for him being the greatest goal scorer in World Cup history. I'm going even further. He is the greatest goal scorer ever. And that at a very diminutive stature. However, if you look at his physique, uh, especially his uh, thighs, those were huge. Uh, I think he scored 365 goals in his Bundesliga career. I think that is a record that will we will be very hard pressed to see that broken. Um, in a kind of a way, fortunately, his single season record of 40 goals was broken by Robert Lewandowski uh, this past season, and I think it already put a, back a spotlight on him. So when I'm talking about Gerd Müller right now, we know about him already. So uh, I think that is fortunate, misfortunate. At least um, he did not die in total an anonymity because the media spotlight was on Gerd Müller already then. Uh, as I said, to me he's the greatest goal scorer of all time and I'm saying this not being a Bayern fan. However, you have to have greatest respect for him. Um, I think his high best World Cup performance that there, there definitely was in the World Cup in 70 where he scored 10 goals. Of course, he's most remembered for scoring a typical Müller goal to win the World Cup in not necessarily his hometown, but in his home country. And he grew up uh, close by uh, in 1974 against the Netherlands. Um, that goal, he was not a brilliant technical player. I mean, in Germany, it's often discussed, could he really play football? But he had an instinct and he had the quick feet to just turn around and score goals, 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 goals. And that's what he did. Always there at the right time, uh, even scoring headers and not being all that tall. So uh, that's pretty, pretty remarkable. Just if you just watch uh, the goals, the two goals that he scored against Italy in the 4-3 loss in the semi-final, that, those are all typically Müller goals. And of course, the World Cup winner uh, in 1974. Uh, I want to end with something because uh, on the field he was a giant, off the field he struggled. I know he went to America to the Fort Lauderdale Strikers in the NASL. Um, then he had struggles with alcohol addiction and then, and that's maybe one of the, <laughs> the things where you say, okay, there is someone who has a heart uh, despite not having all the best reputation. Uli Hoeneß uh, realized that he's struggling with life off the field. And he gave him a job at Bayern Munich and that basically saved his life much earlier. He was um, training the youth squad, uh, mostly as an um, assistant coach and so on. But he was always involved with the club ever since. And as I said, this probably prolonged his life quite a lot. And yeah, fortunately he fell ill and yeah, Gerd Müller passing away at 75 um, last Sunday. Hello, my soccer universe, and welcome to the first video dedicated solely to the German Bundesliga. Because I didn't make a proper preview video except for the shirts of the German teams that I have, most of which you see here on the back. I'm wearing Stuttgart. It was a very, very lively start to what can very well be an exciting season uh, that could potentially see the big favorites Bayern Munich. You see it here in the pre-season simulations that I made. Ratings taken from three sources. I take the SBI 
rating from 538. I took the club ELO rating and I got the preseason odds that I will fade out over the course of the season, but they, uh, of course, figure uh, in here quite some as well. But those Bayern Munich is still a big favorite, uh, followed by Dortmund and Leipzig. You can see those two a little bit closer. Uh, and of course, the two promoter teams will be ranked outsiders. But uh, if anything, we know kind of that at least one of those two teams will stay in. And I have a feeling it will be Bochum. But um, see how the season goes. I also find it interesting that Wolfsburg is still ahead of Leverkusen and Gladbach despite having coaching changes. I could do a whole video, I mean I made one, the coaching carousel in Germany was crazy, it all started with uh, the Hütter going to, from Frankfurt to Gladbach and then everything started snowballing. No, actually Marco Rose to, from Gladbach to Dortmund, then Hütter had to go from Frankfurt to Gladbach, then Frankfurt was longest of times without a coach and suddenly Bayern Munich uh, snatches Nagelsmann from Leipzig. Uh, which means that Leipzig needed to get Jesse Marsh, uh, which caused some trouble in Salzburg. Then Glasner was not happy in Wolfsburg, so he went then to Frankfurt, although he was also considering Leverkusen. Um, Wolfsburg got Mark von Bommel. It, it was quite the turnaround uh, there and made it exciting. And I already said it, Julian Nagelsmann, probably the most exciting coach in Germany. He's now uh, the coach of the best team in Germany, the nine times defending champions. And the question is, will they go for 10? And at this very moment, and it might change, we still have two weeks in the transfer window to go. It might very well be that we could see a title race. However, I think there are contributing factors. I think the most important of those is that the Bayern squad is not deep enough. I mean, I'm not there to so say like low, low, to say at least five scores that are better than Bayern's. But there is some truth to it. Bayern Munich has a very good first squad. And then when you go a little bit further on the bench, it's kind of thin because they, they brought only one person in. Uh, in Upamecano and Alaba and Boateng were leaving. So I, I can see that this is a, a problem. Also, getting used to Nagelsmann, who is also still very young, and the Bayern dressing room is almost full of alpha males. It might be hard. However, I think for me the first condition that this will ever work, 100%, has to be that both Dortmund and Leipzig, or who seem to be the most likely contenders, or whoever wants to challenge Bayern, they need to be consistently picking up points. That's at least how it is. And we already saw that one of those failed uh, this weekend, the first uh, um, uh, weekend of the season. However, the good news is that Bayern also kind of failed to pick up three points. Not failed. They were given a hard task by Gladbach 1-1. Uh, I mean, Bayern took the lead. However, Gladbach got an ich equal in the second half, in the, uh, early, um, uh, late in the first half. In the second half, it could have gone either, either way. I mean, the game started out, the Bayern was really trying to score a lot. Then they got the lead, then suddenly Gladbach was better for most of the time. They even had chances, maybe even a penalty could, could have been given, given for Gladbach in the end. Bayern had had, had big chances, so maybe that, that draw was all right. For me, the outstanding, the, there were two outstanding results then um, as well. Uh, first of all, Stuttgart completely demolishing Kreuter Fürth. That's why I'm wearing my Stutt Stuttgart jer uh, jersey. That was a bright start to, to the season for them. Um, and also Dortmund really taking it to Eintracht Frankfurt. They had a really bad start of the season, already eliminated from the DFB-Pokal. Uh, it was actually Wolfsburg because uh, I think it's not still yet decided, but they will decide uh, either today or, or tomorrow because they made six changes. Not a very good start. Uh, but they made a, 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 a actually fun thing that... Um, this, uh, that uh, making fun of themselves by saying, yeah, if you buy five tickets, you can get a sixth one for free, and this time it will count. So, kind of fun. But Dortmund really having fun, of course, Haaland, of course, uh, Gio Reyna and all of those. Um, if they can continue this form, they probably will not, because we always have some question marks about Dortmund going uh, on the back. 
but it looks quite good, especially with Daniel Malen in there. He might gel very well with Holland, so this could be interesting. For Frankfurt, I'm not yet quite worried. Yes, they had a bad start, but you know, you have a new coaching the system. You, you lost at least Andre Silva, so you know, it's a little bit of a, tra a tra 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 transition and it might actually not work this season that they get in in into Europe, but maybe we'll see. They'll see. It's a long season. We just had a start. This can happen quite uh, quickly. Uh, the big shock of the weekend was that a weekend mind squad, just uh, Mainz had major COVID cases over the weekend, and this weekend mind squad beats Leipzig and fully deserve it. So, uh, very nice goal was actually disallowed in the second uh, half. I think the first goal by Didier Kate just had to pull it in from short range, but the second goal. Uh, the Wolves goal was such a nice volley from from a corner, but seemingly the ball might have gone over the line uh, on the way there. So that's the way. That's why it didn't, didn't come. But that would have been an awesome, awesome, awesome goal. So yeah, and I'm very happy because Köln also in a rather exciting game, uh, winning three one over Hertha. It was great to see Speckers back, because uh, especially. I feel more, more, and more, more and more that the German Bundesliga is probably, uh, when, it, when, when it comes to at atmosphere, one of the best ones in there. And yeah, at the table, the first one doesn't set it to tell as much. So good. let's just see how the expected uh, final standings change based on those results. And as in the midfield, a lot of changes, nothing of a real big importance. But Stuttgart Mainz, of course, moving a little bit up. Huge win for Mainz. And yeah, will be an exciting. Uh, second round as well. We have Leipzig Stuttgart, uh, must win for Leipzig already. And then, uh, I think uh, when I look at it, I mean, Bayern, I guess, current should be a win. Leverkusen Gladbach is a team, is a match that kind of sticks out a little bit as well. So let's see where we go. The Bosnia will start to slowly get rolling. In any case, uh, let me know if you saw any Bundesliga action. Uh, let me know your thoughts on who do you think will win the league. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe and share. We'll see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.